Hello everybody, my name is Lou Anella. I'm a professor of horticulture at Oklahoma State University. And I'd like to show you something today that I built at home. We do science-based education on this program, and this is based on science. Sub-irrigation is a scientifically proven great way to water plants, but this is just an ebb and flow bench that I built at home. Ebb and flow benches are used in commercial greenhouses. There are actually some greenhouses that have entire floors that are flooded with water. That's how the plants are irrigated. But here at home, I was buying plants, lots of them, and needed a way to keep them alive until I could get them in the ground. And I didn't want water going on the floor everywhere if I had this in the garage or something like that. I didn't want to waste a lot of water. I could put a sprinkler head on here, but that would waste a lot of water. So this is an ebb and flow bench. The water comes up out of this tank, bubbles up onto this table, and the plants get irrigated from below. Sub-irrigation. It's a really great way to water the plants. The plants don't get wet, so we have fewer disease problems, but they get watered very, very well. So the whole bench fills with water. The pump runs for about four minutes, and then the water flows down through the same pipe the pump runs backwards and the, the water drains off of the bench. It's important not to let the plants stay in the standing water for more than 15 minutes. So you have to design the bench and leave the water running for such a time that all the water is off the bench within 15 minutes. More than 15 minutes, you might start getting some root rot. You could construct this out of various materials. So all you would need is a flat surface like a table and then something to raise up the, where the water is going to lay. So I use these shelving units, just in case if this didn't work, I'd still have shelves. And then I just use PVC pipe to make this bed for the water. And this is four mil plastic. You could use a pond liner or something like that, but I just use four mil plastic. And uh, it's raised up, there are these little knobs here on these shelving units, and that's helping to keep the PVC pipe up even higher. But you could use uh, two by four, you could use any type of wood that would just allow this to be up higher and hold the water. I made these little clips. This is half inch PVC, so I made these little clips out of three quarter inch PVC. They're truly working really quite well. So I cut a hole here in the plastic and ran the pipe from the pump up through it and sealed all around that pipe with silicone. So it's sealed quite well and that pipe goes down into this trash can. This is a 32 gallon trash can, and that's what holds all the water. The water goes up through the pipe, comes up onto the bench, and then when the pump goes off, the water flows back down through the same pipe, and the pump just runs backwards, and that's how the um, bench drains. There's a hole here for an electric cord because there's an electric submersible pump down here, very similar to this one here. Whenever you're pumping water, you have to be conscious of how high you're lifting that water. So the pump will be rated in feet of head. And the number of feet is literally how high you're lifting the water. So in this case, we're lifting the water three feet. So we would need to have a pump that would be rated for a minimum three feet of head. I do have a funnel here because my uh, silicone seal wasn't exactly perfect, so I did have a few drips and the funnel catches all the drips. And no water goes on the ground, or if you have this in your garage or in a greenhouse, every drop of water goes back into the tank. No water is wasted. Everything stays very clean, and nothing gets ruined by having water everywhere. So one of the things I really like about this system is you could have this in a garage, in a greenhouse, and water wouldn't get all over the floor. Water wouldn't be flowing everywhere, wouldn't be rotting the wood in the greenhouse, or uh, anything like that. It all goes back into the tank. No waste, or very little waste, and no mess. The next component we need to talk about is the controller that controls the pump, and that's hooked up to a pump start relay. So I'm using just a normal irrigation controller to control this system, and it's programmed to come on every day at 7.30 in the morning for four minutes. And on the inside here, uh, I have the irrigation controller wired to a pump start relay. So irrigation controllers work on 24 volts. So they send out a 24 volt signal. But the pump that I need to run every day is 110 volts. 
So a 24 volt signal goes to the pump start relay and says turn on the 110 volts. And then the 110 volts turns on and the pump runs. Then when the clock says turn off, there's no longer electricity going to the pump start relay. That switch turns off, the 110 volts turns off, the pump shuts off, and the bench starts to drain. So sub-irrigation is a scientifically proven way to irrigate plants. And commercially, something like this would be called an ebb and flow bench. But at home, we might be able to make one really quite easily with just simple materials that are quite inexpensive and really can have a very effective way of irrigating plants without much worry and without a lot of work. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.